<clears throat> well, uh, we finished, finally finished, the 26th of uh, December turn in the Case Blue GB2 thingy that we're doing. And uh, I wanted to, first of all, say this is without a doubt the single longest turn it's taken me to play and also the longest elapsed time for a turn over a number of days just because I've had a you know, fractured uh, attention, attention level and other things going on. So, were mistakes made? Yes. Were they fixed? Mostly. Did I screw myself? Several times. Uh, that said, I really thought as of the end of the Soviet portion of the turn on the 26th that we had uh, irreparably broken the trace supply for the map section you're looking at. And the blue cubes represent either points on the map where there are uh, extenders or points on the map where there are railheads and things like that, except for that guy right there. He doesn't belong there. And uh, the white cubes are where I've got SP uh, stacked for you know, either or both sides. As you can see, it's a fairly tense little uh, exercise that's going on here. Now, in the last video, I, I think I mentioned that uh, I had left, or maybe I just posted up some images, that I'd left a town way in the northeast of the map here, Yaroslav, uh, vacant. And I was really concerned about how that would impact the game and impact our, our uh, you know, the, the, I guess the quality of the experience, you know, because it, it was a mistake, uh, I was thinking, right? Let me just kind of hanker in here on it. Now, you, know, you look at this and you think, well, what, what the hell's going on, right? Now, if you recall, I had two commando drops to block trace for a period of time, which actually cost... Uh, upwards of 20 SP, I think it was, or 15 SP or something like that, to keep all these guys in trace uh, for the turn that we managed to knock uh, the enemy, the Soviets, out of supply. So it was well worth it because there's very little uh, supply left in amongst those pools of, of white cubes. Um, so the rationale for me moving this unit from here, from uh, uh, Yaroslav, was, well, hey, you know, we gotta, we got to take care of this dude that is going to potentially move into Rostov up here in the north and cause all sorts of problems. And so I was moving up to attack. And when I started to look at the attack odds and how it was all going to play out, I, I got a little nervous about doing the attack, and I didn't do it. And, you know, we were only attacking... Uh, it's a 353, so it's not a super powerful unit. But the delta on the ARs was really uh, bothering me, and I, I just had had a series of bad rolls for the Soviets with the counterattacks and stuff like that. It's just a disaster down on the, where we broke the extender down there, all the way down here somewhere, over there. And so I didn't run the attack. So, you know, I left the freaking town open. Well, fortunately, uh, the uh, you know the Germans landed in the open in this hex here. I moved these guys down here and then landed this uh, paratroop regiment, the the FJs in here, right? Uh, so they're not in the town. They're going to be in the town more than likely. We'll see what happens with the actual um, the actual. I'm sorry, initiative uh, that, that's going on, that goes on uh, in, in four or five minutes. So here, this breakthrough by the, by, the, by the Soviets to try and break the trace supply unit, which was here somewhere, was very successful. You know, they captured uh, two trucks, uh, two wagons and destroyed three. Really screwed things up. But the Germans bounced back with really aggressive attack on the uh, Soviets here and not only did they attack there and managed to get most of this back in supply I only had to roll for one stack down here who were out of supply uh, they so they did a pretty good job of DG and most of these guys and putting them putting them out of uh, potentially out of supply themselves now the other interesting thing was uh, 
we looked at the map here, and although this is a very thin line and thin breakthrough, it's fairly you know, robustly defended. I've paid a fairly heavy price to do this. It cost me two good tank regiments or tank battalions. And uh, what we have managed to do is get through to this railway junction here. And for my money, this is really what the game is all about, is trying to choke off uh, supplies so that you kill units without having to do a whole lot of combat. And we can imagine that there's lots of other things going on in the battle at the time, and there's you know sort of low latency combat occurring all over the place. But this is where the focal point of the, the attack has been for the, for the Germans. You know, a couple of overruns and uh, putting some units in the right spot is going to do the trick for them. Now, that that effort was combined. I'm just going to have to adjust the camera, so bear with me. Yeah, that effort was combined with a push uh, from this direction. We've got a HQ there in extender range, right? Um, feeding these dudes. I bought a uh, 3SP through by truck. And I've got to check, I haven't done uh, supply in this section of the map yet. We're almost finished with this turn. Uh, we've, we've tried to block off these rails here and there's, a, there's an extender here for trace supply for the Soviets so they could count back to rail over here, right? Well, by putting I just didn't have enough units to try and cover and protect this. I was actually trying to rush these guys down there. They couldn't make it uh, this turn, this last turn. But by putting units in this little section here, in this heavy woods, it's going to force the trace route to go through swamp, frozen swamp, or through and through woods, or around and through light woods, which is just going to chew up the 20 movement point allocation to get back uh, to a railhead. Uh, or adjacent to a railhead, even here. So I don't think they can make it. I haven't done the exact count on it, but it's a damn good try. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that uh, there, and we'll, I'll I'll fiddle with that as the Soviet player later on. So that's what's going up in the north. In the south, it's been really interesting as well because the the, the Wehrmacht is on this freaking uh, really well cadenced. Uh, bounding forward with uh, uh, two wagon extenders and uh, two rail uh, conversion units pulling pulling rail through. I'm trying to do this little section here, uh, pulling rail through so that we can uh, really start to pressure Rostov, but pressure it from a position that allows us to threaten this way and at Rostov, so giving us uh, some choices and forcing the Soviets once again to spread their defense. So I'm really enjoying the play. While it's been the longest and most probably most involved and complicated turn I've done, a bar perhaps the first, the very first turn for the Germans, uh, I'm really enjoying the exercise, uh, uh, the mental and you know, some of the mental gymnastics as I, you know, bound forward into you know something and try and do something and then realize that. That's probably not going to work, and we you know, reassess and redo things. I certainly wouldn't want to play like this with someone because it would drive them nuts. But I don't think that this is a game where I can plan out every single move and then execute them all and remember them all, all by myself for both sides. So there's a lot of moving units forward, stopping, looking, going, yeah, it's not going to work. Maybe I'll flip that guy to combat mode or move him to put him into move mode or strat mode and try it again. Uh, not your typical gameplay, perhaps, that the experts would be conducting. But we never said I was an expert, did we? All right, that's a little wrap-up for you. We're also uh, zooming into attack mode down in near Sevastopol. I've got some artillery in range of those four rated hedgehogs. And we're going to have a, have a shot at uh, the, big, the Big Apple down there, too. We'll talk to you guys soon.